I'd like to welcome everyone to the 27th episode of Money Trees. I'm your host, Khufu. Today, I'm joined by the founder of Better Vibes Only, a creative collective that's home to some of my favorite musicians and artists. I mean, this man is part strategic savant, part developer of worlds, all big business. Welcome, my guy, Brandon. <laughs> Whoa, B, I'm not fucking on your name up. Welcome, my guy, Brandon Graves, to the show. I gotta say that with my chest. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, Grace? Yeah, no, nah, I appreciate you, Brody. I'm good, man. It's always uh, another day to be great, as you know. Just count my blessings, man. Try, try and move forward. I love that. Gee, it is another day to be great, man. You know, there's there's a lot for us to kind of get to. I know it'll be hard to cover everything. I was giving some thought about like how to best approach your episode, and. I want to focus on you. You know, like you and me, you and me have both have a, you and I <laughs> both have a lot of similarities. And as artist managers and strategists, we like to center our artists a lot of the times. And sometimes the skill that it takes for us to do that kind of gets lost in the shuffle. And this episode is about you because I've been blessed to witness the care, the time, the effort that you put in to helping these artists achieve their visions. And it's wild, G, because you do it across so many mediums. And I know how difficult that is. Like, I know how insane it is to be able to flip your marketing mind from music to, uh, well, from straight musicians to performing to 2D artists to 3D artists to brand partnerships, it's like, it's it's very, very impressive what it is that you do. So not that we'll ignore the artists. Thank oh, you. of course, my G, <laughs> of course, you know, like, not that we'll, we'll ignore the artists because I want to talk about the collective that you've been able to put together. But yeah, I do, I, I, we, could, we could talk about the artists another day. I want to talk a little bit more about you. <laughs> so um, wow. I don't know if I even know this story. How did you decide to start Better Vibes? word um well first of all kufu thank you for having me um i love what you're doing here and i love that you you know being a pioneer in the space um especially for our people people of color black people and um yeah any way i can support bro you already know i'm down um but how i got started <clears throat> um i started off as a publicist um i was doing pr for a company called The Purple Agency. And it was run by uh, Felicia Fant, who is a powerful um, executive in the entertainment industry. And she really just gave us um, publicists, junior publicists, uh, the ability to just um, tap in with acts right away and just be thrown to the, to the wolves, if you will, early on. Um, even as an intern, I remember you know, being at big listening events for major artists, whether it be Meek Mill or The Weeknd and uh, working doors early on <laughs> as an intern. Um, so four and a half years of being a publicist um, really molded um, my career and my network as it is today. Um, so fast forward, um, I've now this is my fifth year doing uh, my own, uh, I don't like to call it agency, it's, it's more of a creative collective. Um, I basically real, realized, one, my network it was expanding beyond PR, and um, artists were asking me to do more than PR for them, turned into artists asking me to manage. Um, and then that world turned into, uh, you know, just a bunch of people recommending me for different services. And I, I realized there was a void in artist development at the major labels um, level, and actually at all levels, really. Um, so I just decided to kind of um, take on the responsibility of getting artists um, ready to um, go up against these giant corporations, right? I like to treat artists as entities as well and as brands and let them know like they do have leverage um, with their reach and with their influence and their content. So, um, yeah, Luke, my business partner, Lucas, and I have just been um, t 
taking on various artists over the years and you know i like to merge court corporate with culture um i like to say i'm the modern day robin hood if you will because i go ahead and get um bags from the corporate companies and give them to the culture so that artists can be able to create and get their visions out as they see it and tell their stories as they as they want to so um yeah that's that's kind of where we're at now and it's obviously as you know it's expanded from just working with music artists to like you said uh stop motion animation claymation we just signed our first athlete um so yeah it's 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 expanding quickly but um the beautiful thing about it is the artists have control and they're in power they get to own their ip and along the way get to learn how to become a business which gives them more leverage when you know these companies come knock knocking whether it be the nikes of the world the lululemons gaps what have you um so we set we set our artists and our clients up for that type of success yo <laughs> i mean i'm gonna have to loop that back that's so fire g i think that that outline is you know, you were ahead of the curve because what's happening now we're seeing in this Web3 space, you hit on one thing in particular, right? Ownership of IP. And most of the people, let me, let me not make generalizations. I would say a lot of the people that I've come across in this space, that is paramount for them. The fact that NFTs give artists this ability to retain ownership in a way that wasn't previously possible at a much higher value. So the fact that you've been focusing on that is, you know, we've had this conversation, but I think it puts you in a very unique position to capitalize on many of the um, avenues in this space. Another thing that you said that I agree with 100% is that artists are brands. You know, they're far-reaching brands where their influence spreads beyond their main discipline, whereas a musician your look is something that gets copied and gets mimicked and the way that you um you know take pictures and the way that you perform it's like you're even though your main piece might be music there's so many elements for fans and even other artists to start pulling from and so the idea of artist development like you said you know it's it's almost like a it's almost like a four letter word like i don't even know if artist development exists you talk to even artists that are streaming well, when they go into these labels, it's all about the numbers. It's all about the analytics. Rarely do you see people that are willing to want to put the time in to actually develop these acts. So I think your, you know, two of your main, we can call them like tent poles or principles or philosophies, really align with how I personally believe artists should be treated and where the future of art and the management connection is going to go but like you said it's not even uh you say i love that Cor merging corporate plus culture and being robin hood taking the bags from the corporations you know and giving them to the artist so better vibes what is your or well better vibes what has been the your current take on the state of web3 and now i'll preface this by saying on money trees it's not about being an expert it's really about i want to hear where my homies where my people are at with it and what their take is on it and then start exploring based off of my experience where i think that they can take it so you know it's there is no um expectation of like oh you know you know all of this particular shit about web3 so wherever you're at with it let's hear it yeah well Kufu, you and I have had a lot of offline conversations about it um, over the, I want to say, past year, right? And I've been talking with various artists. Uh, shout out Izzy. Izzy's in here, a very talented artist, recording artist and producer. He's exploring the space as well. Um, my boy, I see my boy Stephen Three in here. We've been talking about opportunities, playing with that. I went down to Art Basel um, last December and was exploring a few... Uh, pop-ups with with steven but the the space is i'm seeing it and understanding it it's really about community growth right and getting a community together that um believes in whatever it is you're selling them and then that value right can go up or down based on the demand so um where i see people like um creative artists playing in the space i think it's an opportunity for um, artists to offer bun it's the new way to offer bundle packages right um, and give fans an incentive 
to really um, not only just engage with their artists, but get real benefits from purchasing an NFT or being in um, a virtual concert and things of that nature. So um, whereas I'm hearing a lot of like a hate, a lot of the hate behind NFTs and stuff is like, oh, well, it's nothing tangible behind it. And you just, you just have a, a JPEG or whatever. And it's like, nah, well, that's certain people doing it like that. But I, I, I envision a world where you actually give physical value from an NFT. And we, we spoke about this with, with Kanye, like your boy, Ye, going crazy. I love Kanye to death. One of my favorite artists of all time. But when he said, I'm not doing NFTs ever, but I'm working on putting real shit in this world or whatever he said, <laughs> I'm like, bro, you know how much real stuff and real value you can give back to your fans if you dropped one NFT, you know? Um, so I think uh, the education around it needs to be uh, better, a lot better. Um, but where I see the space for um, BVO and what we're trying to do is just, it's all about building that community and giving value um, back to your, to your consumers. So again, G, short, you are short explain. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great one though, fam. It really is. So speaking like directly to artists, the way that I try to help them wrap their mind around it is NFTs are just a way to prove you own something digitally. That has not been possible. You know, you can maybe take a screenshot of a receipt and show that you bought something, but you know, those are easily faked and manipulated. When you buy something on the blockchain, it is immutable, which means that, you know, there is no way to go back and adjust it. You can show people like, "Hey, I actually made this transaction." As to the JPEG uses, as to even you know physical versus digital, that all gets really, really convoluted. And it's just like, yo, this is a way to prove you own something digitally. Once you accept that concept, it becomes easier to wrap your mind around because it's like, yo, what, why would – would you ever spend a million dollars on a Pokemon card? I know that I wouldn't, but there are people that would. And so value is subjective. And there are people – you know, we can look at Nip. Nip was – essentially doing nfts when he was selling his hundred dollar mixtapes it was the same concept he was like yo i own my ip and i have people that will pay me this amount for this item that i'm giving them the only difference is it wasn't on a public ledger this isn't really new like we're not doing anything that's brand new you know fractionalized royalties royalty exchange exist uh selling art for high prices that's been happening for hundreds of years but now it's just a different format. It's a bit more streamlined. You talked about something that's really, really interesting, and it's the community aspect of it. You know, part of our conversation has been about really using NFTs to develop those communities where you can set something up where if anyone pulls up to a BVO show or a BVO event, they get an NFT. And now, you know, you could do that for anything. You can give people tickets. You can give people memorabilia. You can collect email addresses. But people don't really be checking their emails like that. <laughs> like, let's be real. Like, you know, your email may fall on deaf ears or they're not going to open it or they're not going to see it. So that long tail relationship with that person, it becomes a little bit more difficult to manage as opposed to, yo, they pull up to a BVO event, you get their wallet address. And then you actually airdrop them tickets to your next event or you airdrop them, you know, some new art or a new NFT for them to have. You're actually straight up giving them value. And that becomes a different exchange where it's like, oh, again, we can use the email comparison. That's been possible already. This isn't anything new, but it's way more streamlined. There's a lot more value attached to it. You're able to kind of curate and keep track of these um, these members of your community. Uh, yeah. We haven't actually talked about this piece, but um, I'm gonna, literally when we get off of this call, uh, I was talking to my guy Ben at Muse about you and what you're building. And what they're working on right now is NFT gated virtual worlds, which is just like, yo, you can build out an entire experience, whether it's a shopping experience or, you know, music performance or whatever, whatever it is that you can think of and make it so only people that have your NFT can go experience it. I mean, yeah, we're, we know what that is. We know about Soho House and other types of membership only clubs. 
Again, nothing new, but way more streamlined. You can't really flex your Soho House membership. Let's be real. Like you can post a screenshot of it, but I don't know. That's not that's not as cool as having some fire art with the Soho House collab that happened. And it's like, oh yeah, I can show this off. We're in entertainment. We know how important that presentation is. Um, and so that's been one of the things just when I think about what you've developed at BVO and what your, again, your principles have been coming up, you're so poised to do well in this space. And I'm excited, I'm excited as hell to explore what some of that looks like. Um, so you mentioned yeah. that you're working with a claymation artist. Could you talk about how that came about? Because that, you know, I don't know many claymation artists. Yeah. And before we go there, I want to circle back to what you said about Nip. Like, he was, you know, you know God bless the dead. If he was here now, he'd be killing in the space, I think. And it would open Smoke up it. a lot. Yeah, a lot of more people's eyes. But he was ahead of his time with selling his um, project for $100. And people don't know, like, that came with extra benefits if you bought that, right? Like, um, he was definitely giving away, like, tickets on the back end. I think there was merch as well he was given. But then he went and took that and doubled down and did the store and he had, like, the smart store going, right? where you go in the store and you can scan something and it pop up the music video would pop up on your phone or right there or whatever. So, um, you know, like, like you said, this has been going on, but now here's a way to streamline it and, and keep it all on one blockchain. Um, as far as the claymation stuff goes, um, my, my fault B now we, now we going to ping back on that, but mm -hmm. that's what, that's what everyone in the space now calls utility. And mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, well, do you need utility or don't you? Well, Again, it's nothing new. Some people will buy it. Some people, I guarantee, bought the mixtape and didn't care about any of it. They just wanted to support it. You know, what was it? Hove bought, I want to say, a thousand copies, right? I don't want to misquote that number, but he bought multiples and it was about the record. I'm sure he didn't care about what came with it. It's like, yo, people's motivation for participating is going to be different. They're going to find value in different elements of it. And you need to look at NFTs as just another way to tell your story. It's not like, you know, I'm not big on people becoming web three artists. I don't really like that idea because I'll tell you what, I don't want to only tour in the metaverse. <laughs> I'll be right. real. Like I want to be outside. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, as, as far as the claymation uh, animation goes, um, that's all Frantic Frames. His name's Ben Treat, but he goes by Frantic Frames. Um, he was brought to my attention during quarantine, uh, when like the first lockdown happened. You know, we were all just trapped trying to figure out what's going on. But um, I had <laughs> I had been bored one day scrolling through Instagram, and you know, I realized that. Uh, Drake only allows people he follows to comment on his post in Instagram. And so I was just like, man, let me see who he actually follows. And uh, Ben's profile picture came up and I was like, who's this white boy with this animation stuff? Like Drake's following. So I clicked on it and I was like, yo, this is dope. Like his work was fire. Um, you know, it gives me that nostalgic feel. Everybody references Gumby first thing when they think claymation. Um, you know, even uh, I'm, I'm currently trying to get him to have time to do a, um, a, a celebrity death match remake with uh, Kanye and uh, Pete Davidson, which would be epic. I think would go viral. Um, <laughs> but but um, I, you know, was at the time trying to figure out how we're going to make content without people linking up. Right. Nobody was trying to meet up and do shoots. Studios were shutting down left and right. Um, so this was a way I, I was like, let me see what his, I DM them, try to see what his prices were for like 30 seconds or like a short one minute and 30 second, which I thought was at the time short one minute and 30 second um, video or something like that. He's like, Oh, reach out to my manager. I'm surprised he even got back to me, but knowing how Ben operates now, like he uses Instagram DMs, like text messages, right? He's hitting all his friends up on there and stuff. So He's very active um, on the DM side. So I hit up his manager, his manager at the time, Josh Bass, who is a good friend of mine now. 
Josh, I, he kindly told me how Ben was out of my price range uh, at the time. So I was like, yeah, man, maybe I can get some brands to pay for it or something. But like, that sounds dope. But like Ben's, you know, work is very, very time consuming and he's paid, um, you know, accordingly for that. Um, so um, I just was telling Josh about BVO, actually, what we're doing at Better Vibes Only. And he actually was like super, super into it. And, and he was like, hey, I love what you're doing. I want to support any way I can. And so uh, he immediately started connecting me to people he knew in the music industry because he's a former artist himself. Um, and yeah, we just kept our relationship flowing throughout that whole year of 2020, being locked down and stuff. And uh, we would just talk a lot about business and the the state of the music industry and where it was going to go post lockdown and all this, all these other things. And he was just really into what I was, what I was saying. Um, to the point by the end of that year, he was like, yo, I'm thinking about uh, taking this job. If I do, I want to give you Ben. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I, that was something I never thought about either. Right. Like I was just like always wanting to figure out how we could work together. And, you know, there's part of me was like, man, I could probably get him some brand partnership deals, but I would never taught, thought about like taking him on as like an actual client. Um, but Josh offered him uh, to me at the top of 2021, had a couple calls with Ben. He liked what we were doing. He liked the, uh, the vision we had for him. And yeah, we officially started rocking uh, top of 2021. So again, all my, all my clients have come from, uh, recommendations. I've never like gone out and sought out to like get a client. They've all been like word of mouth. So I'm, I'm blessed to have, uh, those type of people in my network that really, um, believe and fuck with what I'm doing. So it's, it's just validation. CG, that's wild because you know, like I genuinely didn't know that. And I asked that question because I had a feeling and, you know, it's more a testament to who you are and the way that you approach the craft, where it's like even wanting to take the time out to think like, hmm, let me go check the following of this artist that has a very specific following base and the way the animation stands out to you and not being afraid to like pull up. Like so many people are worried about like jumping in the DMs or like being exposed or being too cool for that or not wanting to have that kind of like tactile approach. And I don't know, maybe it's old school, whatever it is, but like, I love that energy and it's fire that, you know, the relationship with Ben has blossomed and flourished the way that it did. Because I remember when you told me that you got an athlete on BVO and I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) Like that is ill, bro. Because it's one of those things where, you know, you think about it, but to actually say like, no, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go put the time in, I'm going to understand where the overlap is in my business and how this person can fit in and what we can offer them and bring, you know, to the table with them. So again, just a testament to how fire, what I think your building is here, what I think your building here is. Oh, for sure, G, for sure. Um, I actually, this is some, uh, so in in the Web three space, Alpha is like uh, like hot new information, right? So I want to talk to you about some Alpha that you just reminded me of um, with the celebrity death match, right? So I've had this idea, and this is a little bit of a tangent, but um, you remember Def Jam fight for New York? Hell yeah, absolutely. We need to bring that shit back, bruh. And it doesn't need to be Def Jam. Hey. What needs to happen is we need to go and get some artists. And I already, I already have like my. I'm actually look. I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you two things when we get off. I'm gonna send you this doc as well because, well, again, not a tangent on a tangent. Money trees is all about planting trees, planting ideas, and seeing how these conversations that we have normally in private. What happens when we document them and look back at them a year, two years, five years from now and see how much of our ideas were, you know, how right were we? Where did we follow through? Where didn't we follow through and being able to hold ourselves accountable? So I never mind talking about some of the alpha ideas because it's like, yo, like, y'all not me and y'all not be. So the shit that we do, you know, you, if you're better than us, then so be it. I'm a, I'm, I'm a competitive person. So I feel like Absolutely. I don't want to only 
I just know how to shoot a basketball. Nah, like I'm going to go put up a thousand shots and be better. It's not going to be because I know some like random secret. I'm going to outwork it. So anyway, cool. <laughs> Philosophy shit aside, thinking about this game, right? I'm like, yo, we go and get some artists to sign on to it. And we tell them like, you know, whatever we figure out the splits, blah, 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 blah. They got their likeness into it. We can actually crowdfund the entire game using Web3 and NFTs and say like, yo, we've got A, B, and C who are going to be a part of this fighting game. And we were raising X amount to go hire a studio. That is the type of like wild shit that's possible, I feel like, in this space. Because normally you would need to go and try to get some investors, get some backing. You know, video games are type expensive. How are you going to get the marketing? Like it's all of these steps, not necessarily that you have to skip. But you can change it from trying to go and compete for like, you know, a small batch of investors or posing the idea to the public where anyone that remembers Def Jam Fight for New York and could see. And I I I will keep a little bit some of the names that I have in mind. I don't want to jinx it. We'll see if they if they come on board. But some of those names being able to use them in a fighting game. I'll use the Yay and Pete Davidson example. Do you know how hype people would be? Think about the UGC, like the Twitch streams of showing Kanye and Pete Davidson fighting. Exactly. The layers to digital beefs would be insane, bro. Right. The problem, so, the, the problem I have or run tell into me, tell me. with Ben is is he can't it, I can't he can't do it overnight. So I like I have to kind of prep him ahead of time um, for something like that. But like I would love for that to drop like while it's hot. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I mean the yes, definitely with the with with Ben's animation. I'm more meant yeah. like listen. I'm trying to assemble the damn Avengers to build this game. I can't right. do this game on my own. And I know way too many fire people that are around yeah, my age nah, that remember we, how fire that game was. Like we could really make that come to life. I've, and I've actually been talking to some people in the gaming space um, recently. So let's 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 talk about that offline. But uh, you know, rap. You know, yeah, rapper who we have now. Um, he's he he might be tapping into the video game realm. So. Yeah, yeah. So that that's it. Right. Right. <laughs> listen, <laughs> man. Listen. I, I think when like when I think about like the you know Web three, that's been my biggest issue is like locking in with something, and I haven't wanted to because to me it reminds me of like the internet in ninety six, ninety seven, where there's so many different ways for it to go, but we still don't have like the iPhone yet, where I feel like the iPhone really revolutionized the way that people use the internet. And there were tons of companies that kind of came up in that, you know, 2000, like 99 to 2007 range. But when the iPhone came out, then you started getting like the real, real major players with like the Instagrams and the Twitters and just the use case for having a mobile phone. So me, I've been like looking at all the different angles of Web3 and NFTs. And I think that's like the first time I can say as a, a as an adult, I've been able to have like this sandbox way of thinking about marketing ideas, thinking about creating things, thinking about crowdfunding. So I brought up how I have this idea to crowdfund this game. I'm sending you this doc <laughs> once we get off and we can talk about ways to make that a reality because it's a lot simpler than uh, – it, it's, 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 it's very doable. I'll say that. Not even that it's simple, yeah. but it's very, very doable. Get it. um, Yo, speaking on the my, BVO side we, of it – oh, no, what's up? Can we, bring, can we bring Izzy up? I know he has some questions too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, I just sent you an invite to okay, speak, cool. Izzy. All right. Go ahead though. Um. So yeah, I, speaking on the BVO side of that, right, and thinking about the community build of it, I really, really, and I've, I've said this one to you offline, so I'm just going to kind of rehash it, how I think some of these creative collectives can work. And I'm working on, I don't, know if, I don't know if it's a paper or a Twitter thread, but I'll end up putting it out sometime in March, my thoughts behind community and how I think everyone is building communities like horizontally. Where in platforms like Discord or even, you know, now Twitter has their communities place, it's very separate. And so what happens is like, oh, like let's even just take your roster, for example, where like Robert would have a community, Robert would have a community, Frantic Frames would have a community, Leaky has a community, Jero has a community, and that is 
to me, not the best use of the actual term, right? Where I look at that as kind of having, you know, you can have a small town out in the middle of nowhere, or you can have a really popping block in the city. And the dope that I love being in Brooklyn, because I can go from downtown to Dumbo, to Bushwick, to, um, you know, to Williamsburg, and then jump to Manhattan, and it's not far away. And I think that more people need to start building communities vertically, where it's like, yo, BVO can start being like the connected through line for all of these communities. You're already helping them develop a bunch of stuff. You're already helping these artists, you know, build their worlds. Now you can help organize the communities where the communities can jump from being BVO involved to, or not my fault, not being B, not ah. Eh not being BVO involved, but like <laughs> being in Jero's space and then going to see what's going on with Ben over here, where when you start building vertically, it becomes a lot more interesting, in my opinion, than having all of these siloed communities. So that's one, um, I guess, seed or tree that I just want to reiterate on here, document and say like, man, I really feel like you can unite the artist around it. It's a lot stronger moving together like that. And the mission that y'all have is one that clearly your artists believe in, but that people will believe in too. And that shit is fire. So nah, there wasn't really a question there, but um, <laughs> <Yeah>. I just... <laughs> I appreciate that love. And yeah, we, you know, we've had extensive talks about this and I'm all for it. Um, it's more so about getting the artists' um, communities together and one, the artists getting behind it and believing in them in their selves and their community right you'd be surprised about how many artists are like <clears throat> hesitant to jump in this space because they don't think that their fan base will uh like it or engage with it or think it's a money grab or think they're selling a hundred percent a hundred percent that's part of the education piece too you're right like, so just killing that narrative and, and educating um, is something that I'm continuing to do and bringing people um, on board like yourself to have those conversations with the artists too. And we've been talking to countless different um, platforms like, uh, you know, the Open Seas of the World and Nifty Gateways, just trying to educate our artists on <laughs> what it actually is so they feel comfortable in doing that. But you're right, the moment I get, you know, our clients clicking on the same page as far as, uh, building a community in the web three space like it's gonna certainly be a um sight to see for sure yo oh, yeah what up izzy what's happening what's happening everybody good izzy the boy bless man how are you man i'm amazing as always man i um you know i dive into the nft world like i haven't i haven't really you know like learned how to like mint certain things and do certain shit but i understand the process and stuff behind it like so i feel like it's such it's such in its infancy right now that like a bunch of people gonna hop on late and the ones that hopped on early just understand how it moves because like i got nieces and nephews you feel what i'm saying like and i always ask them how they consume shit so i asked them like okay like my niece my nieces and nephews they asked me for v bucks i'm like what the fuck is v bucks okay they tell me what v bucks is they buying shit in the game so that means like you're buying something that somebody created that you own right now on the game, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when you translate that to an artist and how artists, you know, put out music and shit like that, there was this company, I think it's still around, it's called Vest or some shit like that, where you could own, like, a percentage of uh, artist uh, catalog or single or whatever the fuck. And it's like, if you're creating this community where people really like what you do and like your music... Like, yeah, you might have fans that don't understand it, but then you're going to be able to still open yourself up to a whole new world of fans. But then you're also giving value to the people that's buying your shit because it can go up in value. Like, we're in a time now where niggas can buy a Mona Lisa right now for $200. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it might not be a Mona Lisa physical paying. It might be somebody like the guy y'all was saying, like, that's creating the clay uh, claymation type of stuff. It might be something that goes, like, you know, that costs a lot. And now you make two, three hundred, four hundred dollars off of owning a piece of that. So that makes you like, OK, cool. Like it makes you want to kind of invest more into artists. Like picture if everybody owned like point five of Michael Jackson's catalog from buying that album. So it, it just changed. The <laughs> yeah. 
right. It changes the narrative and it creates it creates more like financial stability and it makes that piece. It makes whatever you putting out valuable because music is subjective. So that'll like take some of the subjectiveness out of it because somebody is like, okay, cool. I, I don't fuck with his music, but I fuck with the artwork. OK, I don't fuck with the artwork, but I fuck with the music. OK, I don't fuck with neither one of them, but I fuck with his message. Like like you said, Nipsey, a lot of people bought that album. They ain't even listen to the shit. They bought it for the simple purpose. Like, bro, this a hustler. He selling this shit for $100. I got to have it. You feel me? I want to support. People do that. We still live in that world. So it's like if you translate all the information and the data that we getting from our pre our world that we living in now, and we, when we start hopping onto Web3, it's going to be, oh, shit, like, we have a community of people where it's like, I could blast out a text and sell out a 200 to 500 venue spot because these is all my real fans. They own my music, so they want to see me perform it. You feel me? Like, it opens up hella channels, in my opinion. Right. And, and you're totally Yo, Izzy on. got on here spitting fucking yeah, facts, bro. I, 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 <laughs> hey, yo, I here, love bro. that, G. Had to. Um, Man, it's the shit I be on, bro. So, like, I, I, I can, like, I see the future. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I see the future. It's just not, like, in our face yet. But, like, think about the metaverse and everything. Like, people owning yachts and shit on open sea. So, I'm like, okay, I know what Ethereum, I know what all of this shit does. I know the, the meaning and the backing behind these coins and this, this, like, blockchain technology. So, it's like, we're moving away from our old system to moving into like, oh shit, we own digital real estate. I mean, real estate. Like that's what all of this shit is. Like Instagram, your Instagram is a digital real estate, but you don't own it. Your Twitter is a digital. Uh, like all of these apps are digital real estates. So if you don't have you a space or something like that to be able to create community and add value, then it's like you got left out. You know what I'm saying? If you wasn't building, you wasn't doing certain things. So now in this new space that we have, it gives everybody leverage. Everybody's able to come up now. Everybody's able, like, there's no reason why an artist should be, shouldn't be able to sell out, you know, even a hundred, a hundred person venue because somebody liked their art. Cause like prime example, Gunna got his shit done by uh, Daniel uh, Archman, one of my favorite artists. So that fucked me up when he did that, because it's like, that's a real artist. So now that piece of art can mean something if he was to sell it. You know what I'm saying? And now everybody that owns that piece, say the market go up. Now you you making two, three hundred dollars a month paying bills and shit off of buying something that you absolutely enjoy. You enjoy the nigga single or music. You make money off of it. That's what this shit is about. Right. Like you like when you buy Mona Lisa, it goes up in value because you hang it in your damn house. Right. It's a two, three million dollar paint. That shit really don't mean nothing. You could burn it. It's still going to burn the same if you burn it. So it's like, you know, it's this this space will create way more value for people who want to create, you know, something like came and a show and we all got the text alert or BVO post something and we all got our notifications on and we all going up there and chiming in and tapping in. We're gonna make more people wanna come fuck with whatever is going on, cause that shit gonna look exclusive. That's why people buying board apes, it look exclusive. That shit ain't exclusive at all. It's just like now people talking about it. It has social currency. So, yeah, that's my yeah, little rant, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? That like, shit. <laughs> Yo, Izzy, man. We I appreciate man, you man. coming up and saying that. Yeah, man. <laughs> I need the, need the fucking air right. horns on that. Um, yo, I want to, there's two things, right? If you need any help, like on the mint side of it, tapping in with any of the platforms, DMs is open. Um, tons of the ill music platforms, tons of the ill marketplaces that I have relationships with, with their teams. It could definitely help you get set up there with like the actual, um, technical process of it. But conceptually you got it down a hundred percent. And to your point about being early, like it's just important to be paying attention to the space, even if you're not mitten yet, even if you're not like necessarily sure what you're going to sell, if you can wrap your mind around how to approach it, what exactly is happening here and why it's valuable, you're going to be in a great position because people are just going to ignore it because they don't get it. And instead of trying to understand it, they'll keep ignoring it until it gets to a point where you have to. Where it's like, yo, you know, streaming was happening in the 90s in the music, in the, well, in the late 90s with like LimeWire, P2P and the Napster type ish. But they tried to ignore it. And then companies got killed once the Spotify's came about. And so... On a that's just larger like credit. Scale. That's just like credit. Yep. Like when a motherfucker, when a motherfucker fuck up their credit till they thirty years old, and then actually realize that they need the shit. Like because now this is the where where the world is moving. You know, even if you don't like, like you said, like even if you don't do do something about it, 
at least know about the information and what it does. Like I, I spend an hour a day just learning shit about NFTs. Like I haven't fully dove into like minting, but I know what it does. I know the value that it brings. So yeah, like I would definitely love to, to chop it up about, you know, learning that because being a musician, it'll take a, it'll take most of that stress of going to get a pub deal, going to get this, going to get that. Like if you're doing certain things and you're selling your music to be able to make these new video, bring new videos and get features and do everything. It's like these artists are paying for These people are paying for your career. They're funding your career. If you think about it. So it's like everything kind of mirrors each other. Like, like, look at Bitcoin, look at Ethereum, all of this shit now, like it's in our face and it's here now. And, I, and a lot of, a lot of people are ass late. You know what I'm saying? Like that with IPOs and everything. So picture, we had a discord group and we was like, Hey, look, uh, BBO finna drop, you know, he go to early tickets to a show. You know, Kanye might come through, da, 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 like everybody might come. You never know who gonna be through there. And everybody just kind of on it. We got a community that like everybody's in the community is benefiting off of each other. That's right. And that's what we want to build, Izzy. And that's why we keeping you close because you will be a leader in the space. That's a fact. Yo, a hundred percent. You know, that was, and even that, just the passion behind that, bro. Like you get it as a musician where there's certain, like, you know, there's a couple, you said it's subjective, right? So there's people in the industry that might value and tell you your shit is something. And you know, that is worth way more than what they are telling you. And there's people out there that's going to agree with you and say, nah, I think it is worth this. And it don't matter what these other people think. Like, oh, well, what's your TikTok numbers? It's like, bro, I'm not on fucking TikTok. I'm making this. And that shit don't matter to me. And to fans, to supporters, to collectors, to investors, they each might, like you said, yo, they may not like the art. They may not like the music. They may not like whatever. But they, if they find something that they do like, they now have an avenue to support you in a different way. And so, yeah, G, this, is, this was fire. This was, <laughs> you know, I really appreciate you coming up and saying that. Um, Graves, I know, I know we getting close on time and then this conversation is just one of many we're going to keep having throughout the year. Um, I want to thank you for coming through. I, we definitely going to have to have another episode in a couple of months. <laughs> I know for a fact, uh, just to yeah, even catch nah, up we, on. I'm going to bring all the, all the vibes on, on here. We're going to get the boys on here and get, yep, get it really yep. popping. Facts. Cause yeah, I, I wanted to actually dive in with the artists too and, you know, talk about their side of it, but I know that just from how we work, we don't necessarily center ourselves enough. And so I wanted to make today about the way you approach it, how I think Web3 is perfectly poised for the creative collective that you're building and plant some trees there. Before I, I let you go. I appreciate that, bro. You know, I don't like talking about myself too much. It's all about the artists and I, I believe in my, my work speaking for itself. But, you know, if it's, if it's about the homies, the conversation with you, we do this on a on a regular anyway so let them let them document this record it put it up in the nft archives whatever but we here and we about to disrupt this we about to disrupt the industry as it is and and the whole web3 space so that's a fact there it is g so before i let you go and you actually hit on you alluded to my second question but my first question in web3 uh when you set up a crypto wallet you get what's called a seed phrase. And I keep telling people that seed phrase is not scary enough because if you lose your seed phrase, you lose access to your NFTs, to your cryptocurrency, everything is game over. Here on Money Trees, I've decided to repurpose seed phrase. And so your seed phrase is going to be a motto, a quote, a saying, lyrics that you live by that embody your approach to your craft. So Brandon Graves, what is your seed phrase? Well, I always say on my Monday mood board, at the end of my Monday mood boards on Instagram, every Monday on my post, another day to be great, another week to be great. So I, I definitely live by um, that right there, another, another day to be great, just day by day, brick by brick, and just trying to be better than you were you know, the previous day. That's what it's about. Another day to be great. I love that, G. And we are going to make sure that this moment is celebrated. You know, long, and that is a crazy concept of like something digitally living on, you know, past our days. But that's the idea behind the blockchain is that, you know, YouTube and Instagram and Twitter, 
those posts can get deleted, those things can get removed. The idea is that these NFTs, you know, should last for as long as the internet exists. Obviously, no, no one can tell the future, but we'll see. We are minting the number 27 Money Trees Brandon Graves note on the blockchain. How much am I going to list this one of one NFT for? Mm, it's a good question. Um, well, I want to do like my favorite numbers. So my favorite numbers are three and 11. So we think in three point. Oh, no, you cut out for a second. I heard three and eleven. Three and eleven. Yeah. So either three or eleven. So what's a good price point? So I'll tell you this: it's been they've been listed as low, and I'll say it in fiat like USD. Mm-hmm. It's been listed as low as like a hundred dollars, and as high as two point two million. Okay. So. Whatever combination. And you could also list it in ETH, too. We could do 3.11 ETH. We could do 311 ETH. We could do 0.311. You could do 3,111. That don't really... Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> However you want to play yeah, it. Yeah. It's on you. Um, nah, I want to make it affordable, but it's got to be high-end, like Yeezy Gap. <laughs> <laughs> let's do let's do 3.11 ETH. That's uh, that's probably around like uh, that's like ten bands right now mm. for a one of one BBO that? moment. Need that go and get you one of them. You heard word. <laughs> you heard. <laughs> My guy, yo, thank you, thank you, thank you for pulling up. We got some offline to do. I'm gonna send over the stuff I was talking about right when we get off. Yo, shout out to Izzy for pulling up. Shout out to Steven and John, the audience. This is going to be up on all the platforms, so this knowledge will be shared and disseminated and talked about. And you're going to see, when we look back at a year, all these trees and how they've wow. grown. Absolutely. Yo, love, Thank you. Thank you, Fu.